We have a 50-50 Senate now. We have a 50-50 nation. And I think when the Senate race smoke clears, we're likely to have a very, very close Senate still with either us up slightly or the Democrats up slightly. That very telling statement from the Senate Republican leader highlights a important fact. Control of the Senate right now is a jump ball. The history and the conventional wisdom will tell us that Republicans are expected to win the House, but what is happening in the Senate is a different and fascinating story, and we have Harry Enton back with us to walk us through it all. So, Harry, uh, you're a betting man. Mm. I don't want to be in Vegas with you, but <laughs> tell us... What's going on in the House versus the Senate? Where are your odds right now? Yeah, you know, I'll throw, that, throw those dice. So if we go over and we look right now and look at the chance of chamber control, because I think this really gets at it, uh, it when we're looking at the next Congress. In the House, the conventional wisdom is basically right. You know, the, the Republicans are still a very clearly heavy favorite, over 80% chance to take control of the, that chamber. But look at the Senate. Basically 50-50 at this point. And this, I Wait. think, just... I mean, even this, 51% for the Senate, is not something I think even Democrats would have expected. At this I, I, I don't think Democrats would have expected it. I certainly didn't expect it. And I think this just gets at something that we've seen so far, Abby, which is, you know, candidates do matter. And, you know, if we look, if we look basically at the popularity of the different, make sure I get this right, there we go, the popularity yeah. of the different uh, Senate candidates that Republicans are running, take a look here. Look at these key races. Herschel Walker in Georgia, Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, Dr. Oz down in Pennsylvania. Look at their net favorability ratings here. This yeah. is the favorable minus unfavorable. They're all under water, Abby. And on the Democratic side, similar. It, 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 uh, what we see on the Democratic side, for the most part, is that these candidates are much more favorable, right? In Georgia, you see um, Raphael Warnock with a positive net favorable. In Wisconsin, we don't have a candidate yet. We can go over to the yeah, Senate side we, now. We, we yeah. can go over to that Senate side. And you can basically see, look at, look at these leads that these different Senate candidates have right now. These are the, ch ch the choice for Senate. Look at Pennsylvania. Look at Georgia. Look at Wisconsin. Look at Fetterman's lead in a recent Fox yeah. News poll, 11 points. Look at Georgia, Raphael Warnock's lead, plus four points. Mandela Barnes, this is an older poll, but plus two points over Ron Johnson. These are, you know... But here's, but here's the other thing about these three races in particular. We're also talking about states that Joe Biden has won. So th that's the other reason Democrats are feeling pretty good about what's going on in the Senate. That's exactly right. So, you know, if you look essentially at these states and you say, OK, what are the most competitive Democratic health seats by who won them in the last presidential election? You know, in 2014, the last time Republicans took control, look at all these seats that were competitive that were democratically held. Romney won all of them by double digits, right. Abby. Look here at the 2022 midterm. Joe Biden won all of them. Now, some of them were closer than others, but this is a very different battleground than I think that a lot of people are used to. And that's part of the reason you have bad Republican candidates, but also a very different battleground. But we do have to, to also note, though, that Republicans only need to win one net seat in order to take control of the Senate. But let's go quickly to Joe Biden. Yeah. His approval rating is in the 30s. Where would he need to be just to maintain the status quo here in the, in the Senate in particular? Yeah, so if we essentially look back over time, right, and we look at the president's approval rating in midterms where the White House party had no, let, no let net loss in Senate seats, as it turns out, you can actually have some pretty unpopular presidents. Remember, the Republicans actually gained seats in 2018. In 1982, the Republican Party actually held. So I'm not sure that they're necessary. I mean, to, to be, these numbers we may never see again. Yeah. And, and what happened here in 2002, this was post 9-11 world. But still, I mean, Joe Biden is even, according to the polls currently, less popular than Donald Trump in 2018. Right. His Biden-Gallup approval rating is currently 38 percent. But I think this chart shows that there's not that necessary connection between Senate seats lost and the president's approval rating. And obviously, Democrats hope that that's the case this time around. All right. So, Harry Anton, thank you so much. We will be watching all of this. But also, uh, what a fascinating Senate cycle we are in for this year. It's truly maybe a coin flip where we end up. Up in the air. All right. I want to be on your team for that. <laughs>